Good morning. We welcome you here in person and online to our worship as we worship together our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. On this Sunday, we gather for worship in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us pray. God of the covenant, in the mystery of the cross, you promise everlasting life to the world. Shelter us with your mercy, that we may rejoice in the life that we share in your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us sing. be seated now for our lesson. The lesson for today is from the book of Genesis, chapter 15, verses 1 through 18. We read, 
After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield. Your reward shall be very great. But Abram said, O Lord God, what will you give me? For I continue childless, and the heir of my house is Eliezer of Damascus. And Abram said, You have given me no offspring, and so a slave born in my house is to be my heir. But the word of the Lord came to him, This man shall not be your heir. No one but your very own issue shall be your heir. He brought him outside and said, Look toward heaven and count the stars, if you are able to count them. Then he said to him, So shall your descendants be. And he believed the Lord, and the Lord reckoned it to him as righteousness. Then he said to him, I am the Lord who brought you up from Ur of the Chaldeans to give you this land to possess. But he said, O oh Lord God, how am I to know that I, am, that I shall possess it? He said to him, Bring me a heifer three years old, a female goat three years old, a ram three years old, a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. He brought him all these and cut them in two, laying each half over against the other, but he did not cut the birds in two. And when birds of prey came down on the carcasses, Abram drove them away. As the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abram, and a deep and terrifying darkness descended upon him. And the Lord said to Abram, Know this for certain, that your offspring shall be aliens in a land that is not theirs, and shall be slaves there, and they shall be oppressed for four hundred years. But I will bring judgment on the nation that they serve, and afterward they shall come out with great possessions. As for yourself, you shall go to your ancestors in peace. You shall be buried in a good old age, and they shall come back here in the fourth generation, for the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet complete. When the sun had gone down and it was dark, a smoking fire pot and a flaming torch passed between these pieces. On that day, the Lord made a covenant with Abram, saying, To your descendants I give this land, from the river of Egypt to the great river, the river Euphrates. Please stand if you are able for the gospel. The gospel reading is from Luke chapter 13, verses 18 through 21. Luke writes, Jesus said, therefore, what is the kingdom of God like? And to what should I compare it? It is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in the garden. It grew and became a tree, and the birds of the air made nests in its branches. And again he said, to what should I compare the kingdom of God? It is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour, until all of it was leavened. This is the word of the Lord. Please be seated. Will the young people please come forward for a message? Hello, kids. I've got a message from God's Word, the Holy Bible, for you today. You see these two things in my hands? They are two branches. Do you see them? I found both of these little branches on the ground this morning now off of the tree they were part of, but I still want to compare them to each other. Do you see that there are differences? Hmm? That's right. One of them has little branches on it, and the other one doesn't. Do you see that? You know, Jesus says today that we should be like a tree that has lots of branches on it, like this one. We should be like this one. Because trees with lots of branches on them not only have branches that help the tree itself. Those branches, see here, those branches also help birds make nests in them. Jesus says that today. And, and, and squirrels make nests of them too, I might add. You see, it's a picture of what our life in Christ should be like. We could be like this piece of wood with no branches. But Jesus doesn't want us to be that way. Because it might be alive, 
but there's no branches on it to help others build a nest or whatever. And, uh, but we should be like this branch. And then the branches of our lives help other people because we're reaching out to help other people like this branch. So what is Jesus really getting at? Well, he wants us to be Christians that are not here on earth just to help ourselves like this. Jesus wants us to be here and help and support others like this. Jesus wants us, just like this piece of wood, to reach out and give and provide help, offering a place for others to rest and get better and have a better life. So let's be like this branch and reach out to help other kids. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, we're very thankful. Thankful that you give us this picture of what being part of the growth of the kingdom of God of love is like. The, the kingdom of love grows when we reach out to others and we love and support others to help them build up their lives. Help us to be a help to other kids that we see in school and elsewhere. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. The scene is perhaps the closest we get in the Bible to the macabre. Ooh. Abram, soon to be renamed by God Abraham, has confronted God about those promises God had made to him before. Are these promises for real? Do not be afraid, God said to Abram in a vision. I am your shield. Your reward shall be very great. Abram, who had left everything years earlier to follow this God, scoffed at this so-called reward. What reward? You, Abram told God, you have given me no offspring, and so a slave born in my house is to be my heir. God then promises a physical heir, a little kid. And there in the bleakness of that night, God took Abram out of his tent into the darkness. Look, God chided Abram, count the stars, if you were able to count them. So shall the number of your descendants be. And then the most amazing thing happened. At that moment, we read in Genesis, Abram actually believed the Lord and the Lord reckoned that belief, that belief in, in God himself, as righteousness. Paul later wrote that Abram's belief in God started a whole new religion. A religion not of works, but of faith. Complete faith in God. Now to have such faith may seem strange in a world in which a great many of us are paid only on what work we actually do, not on whether we believe in anything. Yet, let us reflect on our own experiences for a moment. We know that we end up being more inspired and doing more when we are believed in by other people around us. When others have faith in us, especially when times are hard, especially when daytime blessings, so to speak, have turned into dead of night difficulties. Abram is at the end of his rope. He presses this God that he first met in Ur of the Chaldeans for more reassurance. In return, God wants Abram to, to act out this, this faith of his. God gets Abram to sacrifice a series of animals in preparation for the next dead of night. We read, as the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abram. And a deep and terrifying darkness descended upon him. Ooh. God speaks of the sleeping Abram as though Abram can hear God and see God. And we read, when the sun had gone down and it was dark, a smoking fire pot and a flaming torch passed between these pieces of the sacrifice. On that day, the Lord made a covenant with Abram. You see, God had not only communicated with Abram, God had come down to earth 
to hold this smoking fire pot, to hold this flaming torch. God loved Abram so much that God made himself very small, small enough to be there with Abram in the dark night of Abram's soul. I will wager we have all had dark nights of the soul when we have wondered whether we are going to make it or not, or whether we are going to ever get some sleep, or whether someone is out to get us, or whether, or whether someone we love is going to survive. A part of us wants to believe that everything will turn out all right, but we're not sure. God knows of our dark nights, our dark nights of the soul, because God has shown us God's own dark night of the soul. When Jesus was about to be arrested, he got in the flesh, sweat blood that night, and struggled in prayer to continue to accept dying a torturous death on the cross. The next day when Christ was on that cross in the midst of dying, Mark tells us that, and I quote, when it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon when Jesus died. So yes, God who created that darkness knows the dark night of the soul very well, personally. The biggest darknesses, my friends, that we go through involve a feeling of being buried, lost, alone. We see these things in the Bible. People go through these things. Jonah in the big fish. Joseph in prison. Elijah running for his life into a cave on a cliff. David fleeing for his life from the power of King Saul. Naomi forced to, to return to her village as a failed widow further weighed down by a stubborn and foreign daughter-in-law. Daniel in the lion's den. And on and on it goes. And finally, Jesus in the tomb. Jesus was buried, lost, and alone in that tomb. But before he went there, he had this to say of his upcoming death. He said, very truly I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies... It remains a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. We all know seeds, if you look at one, looks dead. Looks dead when it's buried into the darkness of the soil. But later, these seeds sprout up into the daylight and new life. Jesus was a seed that died in this way to later sprout up and bring us new life. And Jesus told two parables today which talk about what becomes buried and hidden being the source of new life. The first is about a mustard seed buried in the ground that eventually becomes a great tree full of branches. The second is about yeast that is mixed into and buried into and disappears into a measure of flour until that flour becomes fully leavened and becomes a growing loaf of bread. In both of these parables, you see, and in the life of Jesus himself, Christ is revealing a major mystery of life under God. That somehow, when it seems we might be losing, we win by showing love. It takes the gift of faith to be willing to, as Jesus put it, hate one's life in this world in order to keep it to eternal life. Instead of being one of those who love their life too much, who, who end up losing it. It's a raw quality to deep faith. A deep faith challenged by defeats and tragedies and great disappointments. Martin Luther felt that we probably needed great challenges in life. Why? Why do we need our dark nights of the soul? In order, he said, to deepen our faith in God, which is what Abraham did. For the deepest faith is when we, very limited human beings, still believe in God's will, even when we have reason, again, very limited reason, to not believe in God. One dark night of the soul for me was on the evening of Monday, February 28th, 1983. I was a baby. No, I wasn't. I was a junior in college. 
And I had recently realized that I believed in God again. I still was determined to keep, you know, that change I had made in my future occupation, to keep wanting to be a lawyer rather than wanting to be a pastor. There was an evening pre-law class that night that I was taking that semester. I was working with another student on a project to be delivered that night. Each pair of students in the class, like John and myself, were given a case to pretend to act out. Each of us would re represent different sides of a, of a civil case before the professor and others. When we put on our case and others, for each case, volunteers played the judge and a few key witnesses. Our civil case was that the people were suing the skipper. They had been rescued from Gilligan's Island and were now suing the skipper for negligence due to the shipwreck. I thought we had worked things out between the two of us, John and I, so that we would both do well. But John veered off script and made me look bad. That night, I walked from the classroom home to my fraternity, feeling really lost and alone. Right at the front gate to the frat, I was suddenly seized by a kind of spasm of emotion. I was crying, but it was more than that. I, I can't really fully explain it. But the thought came into my head with great force. You will be a pastor. I fought the thought. Then finally, I accepted the thought. Accepted by the fleshy side of me very reluctantly. I wanted to talk to someone as soon as I entered the frat house, but no one was around, and I wondered why. Well, back then in the frat, we had only one TV down in the basement in what we called the tube room, which was built by us like a little amphitheater. I could hear the TV, and when I opened the door, the place was packed with, with people watching the final two-and-a-half-hour episode of M.A.S.H. That's how I know what day it was. As my eyes got adjusted to the darkness, I saw one seat available way up in the back. There, as I watched the end to a beloved TV show, I tried to keep my runny eyes and sniffles from being noticed by anybody else. I was trying to figure out from the show what I was, what I was missing. Hawkeye was in a loony bin, and I couldn't figure out why, nor could he. That psychiatrist character who showed up every once in a while on the show, Dr. Friedman, was interviewing him. Yesterday, he said to Hawkeye, you were, you were going to tell me about that day at the beach. Hawkeye recounted a great vacation day for the whole MASH unit at the beach in Korea. He admitted later that on the way back to their medical camp, the bus had to stop for fear of the enemy. There was a Korean woman in the back, holding a chicken on board. And Hawkeye was telling her to keep the chicken quiet, or they'd be found out and all of them would be killed. Finally, at another session, Hawkeye was talking about that incident and how suddenly the chicken stopped making noise. It, it, it just stopped, he said, and then he suddenly yelled, she, she killed it, she killed it. I didn't mean for her to kill it. She killed the chicken, the doctor asked. It was, it was a baby. She smothered her own baby. Crying, he turned to the doctor. You SOB, he said. Why did you make me remember that? And the doctor replied, you had to get it out in the open. Now you're halfway home. My emotions already reeling while I sat there in the back row, I identified a little with Hawkeye. Why, God, I thought, did you make me remember my call to be a pastor for you? I didn't call God an SOB. Then I watched as Hawkeye healed and put that terrible night of his in the proper perspective. Meanwhile, over these many years since then, I've changed my view of what happened from what I was feeling that night. My soul now rejoices in that night. Why? 
Because God knew where I should be going and what I should be doing. God knows that about all of us. All of us, not just pastors. There are nights like that for all of us. That, like with Abram in Genesis 15. God makes a covenantal partnership with us in order to give us the faith to go on. There are nights for all of us when the sun has gone down and it's dark. But there's a smoking fire pot and a flaming torch that light the way for us to live, to live another day. You know, that's all Jesus wants to us, us to endure when we feel we cannot go on. Just get through another day. You know, we like to say that Jesus told us not to worry, and that's true. But he told us not to worry about tomorrow. What he also said was, today's trouble is enough for today. And God promises to be with us and lead us through each day, even the troublesome days. His invisible presence ever more reliable. His invisible presence is with us each and every day and night. What Abram realized and what we can all realize in the dark night of our souls is that God's invisibility is not an element of confusion, but assuredness. You see, if the God is invisible, it does not make God more difficult to follow, but easier to follow in faith. God is invisibly here with you, just as God was invisibly there with me in 1983. So let's cultivate the strength found in God's invisible, mysterious, yet ever more dependable presence in our lives. Let's you and me rely on it. And why? Because God, as Abram found out, more than comes through. Someone recently introduced me to an old hymn whose words reflect this truth. In the dark night of the soul, this song proclaims the following. It proclaims that, that God is not gone, that God is even more here. God is even more here for you and me. Here are the words of the hymn. God giveth more grace when the burdens grow greater. He sendeth more strength when the labors increase. To added afflictions, he addeth his mercy. To multiply trials, he multiplies peace. When we have exhausted our store of endurance, when our strength has failed ere the day is half done, when we reach the end of our hoarded resources, our Father's full giving is only begun. Fear not that thy need shall exceed his provision. Our God ever yearns his resources to share. Lead harm, lead hard on his arm, everlasting availing. The Father, both thee and thy load, will upbear. His love has no limits, his grace has no measure, his power no boundary known unto men. For out of his infinite riches in Jesus, he giveth and giveth and giveth again. Now that's a God you can count on. That's a God you can make a covenant for life with. That's a God in the dark night of your soul. That's a God who is a God not just of our day, but our God of the night. Amen.
thank you again for your continued offerings. We've all in this world gone through a lot together and your gifts help us to be there for others in the dark nights of their souls out there and among each other. Uh, one little word from our stewardship team and, and Nancy, if you have uh, in the past made pledges we encourage you to receive those pledges again to our general fund and on the screen there you can see how you can give um, online if you wish but most of all again we are thankful for your prayers of support and guidance Just let us say together the words of the Nicene Creed we believe in one God the Father the Almighty maker of heaven and earth of all that is seen and unseen we believe in one Lord Jesus Christ the only Son of God eternally begotten of the Father God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray together to God. Almighty God, Father of mercies, King of the nations, we urgently cry out to you for the people of Ukraine. Give them hope and courage to face the violence, bloodshed, loss, and heartache which has beset them, and rescue them speedily from the hands of their oppressors. We ask for the kingdom of your beloved Son who came by way of the cross to expose the folly of prideful leaders and thwart the evil, ambition, thwart the evil ambitions which have led to this moment. You who, as it says in Scripture, break the bow, shatter, break the bow, shatter the spear, and burn chariots with fire, please, O oh Lord, in some fashion, shatter the machines of war, that violence may cease. Raise up peacemakers and unite leaders with the wisdom that is your gift to us from above. O oh Lord, you know that we humans have all had dark nights of the soul, times, day or night, when we have been harried, fearful, and in great distress over the events in our lives. We are thankful that in your holy word, you show us how you came to Abraham in his distress and promised and then carried out those promises to save him. Help us to believe in you, to believe in your son Jesus, and to believe in your Holy Spirit, for you can be a great spiritual comfort in the same way, for you are the way, the truth, and the life. O Holy Spirit, please be with others who are in need of your special healing, your great comfort, 
and your awesome strength. Be with those who are sick or injured in our midst, such as Bob, Brian, Kim, John, Vaughn, Wayne, Julie, Betty and Jim, and Jane. Oh Lord, we pray for others on our prayer list and others who are in our hearts, family and friends in these moments of silence. We have prayed for these who are dear to us, O Father, and now we put them into your hands, trusting in your forgiveness and love. Through Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body broken for you. Eat this and remember me and my ways. After supper, Christ took the cup. He gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant written in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of all sin. Drink this and remember me. Let us pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The body of Christ broken for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. Now from what you have just received, may this body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ Keep you in his grace and peace now and forever. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you God's peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. While well, we continue our, to post our weekly worship services on our website, if you happen to miss a service, please check on that at kogcarmel.org. There's lots of other stuff on that page. We're redoing our website, so look forward to that. It's coming soon. And in any case, we'll see you again one way or the other at 10 a.m. next Sunday. Go in peace and serve the Lord.